On today's show, we turn the spotlight on the older members of society, our seniors, those individuals who have helped to shape our rich legacy. First up, the latest information pertaining to policy development for elders. Plus, grandpa and grandma needs exercise too. We take you through the routine. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Theodore Henry. Stay with us as we observe Senior Citizens Week. Hurricanes can strike at any time. In the event of one, be prepared to act quickly. If a hurricane watch or warning has been issued, review your home disaster response plan. Map out likely routes to evacuate if your home is at risk and confirm with relatives or friends you plan to stay with. Also, confirm the location of the nearest shelter. Check your emergency supplies and restock if necessary. Remember, disasters do happen, so be prepared. Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Friday, September 29. Jamaica is on track to build out 1.35 million square feet of space and add an additional 25,000 new jobs from investments in the business process outsourcing sector by 2018. In making the disclosure, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says his administration is intent on nurturing the growing demands of the industry through the provision of an enabling business environment and human resource development. We stand in support of a partnership. If the private sector grows, we can do more for the public sector. And when the public sector is more efficient, it does more for the private sector. And then we create a virtuous cycle of partnership. I am taking a personal interest in ensuring that we solve the training needs and the HOPE program will rapidly increase your employment base to ensure that there are no constraints to the potential growth of this industry. Mr. Holness was speaking Thursday as he broke ground for 58HWT, the Caribbean's largest technology park along Halfway Tree Road in St. Andrew. The 30 million US dollar investment by Stanley Moto of the Muson Group will have 236,000 square feet of space to house BPO and its support service while creating 5,000 new jobs. The project will be available in June 2018. The Caribbean Maritime Institute is now officially a university as the institution received its new charter status yesterday. This follows the passage of relevant legislation in Parliament earlier this year to grant the institution university status and to confer degrees, awards, certificates and diplomas and other academic distinctions. The Charter Day ceremony held at the National Arena was attended by more than 5,000 persons, including several regional heads of state and other officials from around the world. Among the guests was the university's first chancellor, His Royal Majesty, King Drolor Bosso Adamati I, king of one of the largest tribes in Ghana. Addressing the Charter Day ceremony, Portfolio Minister Michael Henry says the university will continue to grow in enrollment while transforming its nearby communities. It's the location of the campus, the dream of transforming the Port Royal and Harborview communities. The campus is far away from the world, but it's still a part of it. Still many of us in the fulfilling notion that the CMU can once teach students to explore some abstract intellectual and skillful horizons and at the same time create class after class of devoted alumni who see service to the community, positive action in the real world as their highest achievement. The Palisados-based institution is the only international entity approved for maritime training in Jamaica, with 80% of the teaching support personnel and 50% of the board of directors drawn from organizations within the industry. The development of policy and regulatory framework for Jamaica's natural gas sector will be part of the discussion at the inaugural Natural Gas Conference. The event is scheduled for October 4 to 6 under the theme New Horizons, the development of a natural gas sector in Jamaica, prospects and challenges. 
Speaking at a JIS think tank on Wednesday, Manager of Corporate Affairs and Communications at the Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica, PCJ, Camille Taylor, said the conference is in line with the government's move to diversify the country's energy supply. The conference will bring together players in the local, regional and international natural gas industry. We will be looking at the implications um, for Jamaica's energy landscape, the implications of the introduction of natural gas for Jamaica's energy landscape. We will also be looking at the spin-offs and benefits to several industries, including finance, insurance, logistics, legal services, management um, services, to name a few. Meanwhile, Deputy Director General at the Office of Utilities Regulations, OUR, Hopeton Heron, said the conference will also focus on the use of natural gas in other sectors. So in order to get the framework in place, we need to look at the regulatory, the legal aspects, the financing of natural gas projects, the, the, the taxation implications, and all the other aspects that will make a natural gas industry uh, what it ought to be and to make it efficient. For registration and payment details on the conference, persons may visit pcj.com, our.org.jm, or jamaicagasconference.com. Jamaica will host the World Bank High Level Caribbean Forum on November 16 this year. The conference being organized by the International Monetary Fund, IMF, will be held under the theme unleashing growth and strengthening resilience in the Caribbean. Focus will be on unique issues facing the Caribbean and opportunities to cope. The topics to be discussed include crime and youth unemployment, fiscal policy and policy, political cycles, and financial stability and growth trade-offs. The event is a follow-up to a, a similar high-level conference in Trinidad and Tobago last year, the event will bring together several heads of government from the Caribbean region, central bank governors and other high-ranking officials from several Caribbean countries, as well as the IMF's managing director and senior officials from the IMF, other international financial institutions and other private sector representatives. The event will be open to the media. Members of the newly formed United Nations World Tourism Organization, UNWTO, group to assist regional countries devastated by recent natural disasters, are to meet in Grenada. The group will meet on October 9 to discuss how to assist tourism-dependent member states recently destroyed by natural disasters. The meeting will be held during the Caribbean Tourism Organization's annual State of the Tourism Industry Conference. Several stakeholders, including the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, the Caribbean Tourism Organization, and a number of multilateral agencies are being targeted for their support in the Rescue and Rebuilding Initiative. And finally, Tax Administration Jamaica, TAJ, will be facilitating business this Saturday with the opening of select offices island-wide. The locations include Spanish Town, Constant Spring, May Penn, Mandeville, St. Anne's Bay, Savannah Lamar, and Montego Bay. The offices will operate from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The Portmore Tax Office will also be open, but will close at 4 p.m. Communications officer at the TAJ, Leighton Beckles, says the Saturday opening is part of the administration's efforts to provide value-added services to the taxpaying public. Services available on Saturday include traffic ticket amnesty payments, property tax payments, filing of tax returns, motor vehicle transactions, driver's license renewal, and TRN applications. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. Inform yourself about the HTLV-1 infection. HTLV-1 means human T-cell lymphotropic virus type 1. It's not the AIDS virus, but they are contracted in a similar fashion. You can get the virus from having unprotected sexual intercourse, getting blood that has the virus in it, breastfeeding, and sharing injection needles with HTLV-1 infected persons. These are a few of the signs and symptoms of the virus. Skin rashes, swollen lymph nodes, back aches, difficulty in passing urine, sensation in the feet, weakness in the legs, and reduced sex drive. If you have any of these signs or symptoms, you should see a doctor. For further information, please contact the HTLV Project, Department of Pathology at the University of the West Indies, Mona Kingston 7, at 977-1958, 
or 927-1620-9. Senior Citizens Week 2017 started on Sunday and the observation continues on till Tuesday. This year's observation has brought into sharp focus the government's plans to provide greater assistance to this segment of society. Listen now to Portfolio Minister Shahini Robinson. The month of September, which has been designated as Senior Citizens Month, has been very active as we engaged our seniors in very active, various activities throughout the month. The observance of Senior Citizens Week this year under the theme Seniors Promoting Intergenerational Solidarity provides a marvelous opportunity not only to recognize and honor our older citizens, but to also examine ways to improve the connectivity between our elders and the generations of the future. As we seek to celebrate our seniors, their achievements and their contributions to our nation, I am mindful of the reports of the treatment being meted out to some of them by some members of our society. I must point out that the way we treat our seniors is a reflection of who we are as a people. The incidence of abuse continue to increase and this does not augur well for us as Jamaicans. Our senior citizens are being abused sometimes even by their own family members and sometimes by persons who they nurtured in their communities. These elderly persons have served our nation with pride and dignity. Some of them worked under trying circumstances in an effort to help build this country. The enhanced quality of life and the improved working conditions at workplaces that we sometimes take for granted is as a result of their hard work. Indeed, their sweat and blood, and we should be mindful of that. As Minister with Portfolio Responsibility for Senior Citizens, I believe it is incumbent on me to appeal to all Jamaicans from all spheres of life to enable the elderly, to lend them a helping hand, and to protect them from the unkind treatment that some of them are subject to. I want to make it clear that this society should not and will not tolerate the abuse of our senior citizens and that every step will be taken to ensure their safety, well-being and welfare. At this time, I would like to pause to extend on behalf of the government and people of Jamaica sincere condolences to the family of the late Violet Moss Brown. Mrs. Moss Brown brought us much fame and honor when she became the oldest living human being in the world. She will be missed, but her memory will live on in the lives of generations to come. The National Council for Senior Citizens is working assiduously to ensure that all seniors are able to access the benefits available to them. The NCSC ensures that many seniors are involved in income generating activities, thereby adding to their independence and usefulness. And in providing computer training for seniors in partnership with parish libraries island wide, the Council is ensuring their adaptability and participation in a rapidly changing world. The NCSC continues to provide skills training and workshops, retirement seminars, sensitization sessions on topical issues, feeding programs, health activities, cultural days, sporting events, Bible quiz and spelling bee competitions, day activity centers and clubs, among other activities and programs in all parishes. The national policy which is being revised is to now be submitted to cabinet for review and discussion. The ratification of this policy will have a lasting outcome which will redound the benefit of our elderly. Most importantly, it will provide the mechanism whereby all senior citizens will be registered. The importance of this cannot be overemphasized, as the registry will seek to capture data on all our senior citizens and lay the foundation for the government to better address their needs. Through policies and programs, we will know what to do better when we have this registration. In the meantime, I encourage our elderly to register with the Senior Citizens Club 
there are representatives in all of our parish offices who will assist you in finding the club nearest to you. I charge each of us to work towards building a Jamaican society where healthy relationships are fostered among our elder citizens and our youth where the transfer of knowledge will serve as a preservation of our cultural legacy and a testimonial to the direction we want our society to go. Let us connect for legacy's sake. Let us connect for survival and growth. Intergenerational solidarity can reinforce family and community bonds as we strive for growth and prosperity. More moments. Jamaica Moves is a call to action to prevent non-communicable diseases. Get active, eat healthy. You can protect yourself from high blood pressure, obesity, asthma, certain cancer diseases, and more. Still on caring for the seniors. Up next, movements for those joints and limbs. <laughs> Keeps you young, make you look good in your clothes, make you attractive to opposite sex. It's only a matter of fitness and health. Keep me vigorous and keep my youth. It's the healthy way, I want to say, slim. It is true that many of us know that exercise is good for us, but we avoid it. Why? Because we are afraid that exercise has to be vigorous before it can be effective. But physical trainers say this is not true. Every little bit counts. It all adds up to burning more calories. We may not be ready for a structured program like going to the gym, but we can start small. The first thing that exercise is help us to do is to maintain a healthy lifestyle. And the first thing that we want when we exercise is to live long. And so the longevity of life is, is in fact guaranteed for persons who live a healthy lifestyle by form of exercise. Medical experts say if we are not engaging in enough physical activities, we are at major risk for developing coronary artery disease. It can also contribute to other risk factors like obesity, high blood pressure and diabetes. However, physical trainers say before we start a vigorous exercise program, there are a few things we must do. You need to consult your physician first, get an okay from them, and then you proceed with your exercise. And we would advise you not to start vigorously. Start exercising at slow paces gradually getting into the vigorous aspect of your exercise. According to physical trainers, we must do any moderate to vigorous aerobic activity for a minimum of 30 minutes, at least three to four times per week. This is to reduce or eliminate some of the risks associated with a lack of physical activity as part of our regular routine. Here we go. Moderate physical activity may include brisk walking, gardening, raking leaves, sweeping the floor, pacing while you talk. When you're on the phone, pace around. This is a great way to stay moving while doing something you enjoy. Getting up each hour to stretch or walk. Walk the stairs at work and dancing can also make a difference. You don't have to go to a gym to exercise. And exercise is um, usually a routine that you consistently do, whether it's at home or at school, that you benefit from the heart and the lungs and the other aspects of your body benefit from. Nine, ten, hold them up now. Come on, let's stretch it. Stretch it. Stretching and aerobics are some of the exercises that we can do at home to help us keep fit and maintain a healthy lifestyle. Aerobic exercises strengthen your heart and burn calories. Hey. 
According to physical trainers, stretching exercises are essential for keeping our muscles flexible and our joints strong. You can stretch the body every day. We can all do exercise. I would probably only limit to the persons who are paralyzed from probably waist down. But even the persons who are paralyzed from waist down, their, their arms are able to, to, to do something. So you can do something with the hands. Physical trainers say if you experience any of the following symptoms during exercise, you must stop and rest. Dizziness or lightheadedness, abnormal heart rhythm, pain in the chest, under the breastbone, and or down the arm, pain in the knees, feet, or ankles. After, stop and rest. If the symptoms persist, you must call your doctor. I feel stronger, flexible. I feel so refreshed and like I can take on a day. And I think it has helped to make me look youthful, so exercise is great. It firms up your muscles and um, it gives you more energy. We can all improve our health and well-being and have fun by including moderate amounts of physical activity in our daily lives. Remember, if fitness is a goal, exercise is the way to get there. Gastronomy has the potential to create niche travel and offers both domestic and international visitors the opportunity to sample the varied cuisine that our island offers. From a road food experience to gourmet five-star Jamaican dining, our chefs, both trained and untrained, are among the best and the most creative in the region. And we should capitalize on this as there are so many unique experiences that can be created. The economic link between gastronomy and tourism will create more demand for local agricultural produce, especially those exotic food items not readily seen in most of our hotels. It's also Tourism Awareness Week, an observation of the industry which has brought in over $2 billion in earnings since the start of the year. Still, there's one facet of the industry Jamaica is seeking to tap into on a deeper level, gastronomy. Watch this. Imagine a tour on which you'll eat till you're full, dining against the backdrop of the blue hues of the mountains, sipping authentic Blue Mountain coffee. Sounds appealing? Then you must, if only once, venture on the Jamaica Blue Mountain Culinary Trail. The Ministry of Tourism has embarked on a gastronomic mission to promote Jamaica as a culinary destination. This is the main aim of the Gastronomy Network, one of five networks established recently by the Ministry. The first product of the Gastronomy Network was the implementation of the Jamaica Blue Mountain Culinary Trail. This is a tour of eateries and attractions nestled within the UNESCO-designated World Heritage Site of Jamaica's Blue Mountains. Whether you take the Eastern or Western Trail, you'll have access to at least 15 participating venues. Gastronomy, or food tourism, as people commonly refer to it across the world, represents 88% of the reason that people travel. Therefore, we'll be responsive to the palates of the world. What we have to do is to prepare it a little differently present it a little more appealing and to move it from basic street food to the highest level of gourmet. Wet the palate with hors d'oeuvres, dip into Strawberry Hill Restaurant's coffee ice cream or drink coffee at a more than a century old farm. From Colombia, we also say Colombia's coffee is really good and we're really proud about it. So it was really interesting to hear the Jamaican perspective of their own coffee. 
The coffee was delicious and it's really amazing to be able to have a cup of coffee, look into the mountains and just like enjoy. So the coffee was definitely the highlight for me today. Jamaicans talk about how great our coffee is but I don't think we have any idea why and that's what I learned today. It was, it was phenomenal. Vegetarians, meat lovers, those into traditional cuisine or Jamaican fusion meals, there's a bite for every appetite. The Jamaica Blue Mountain Culinary Trail provides a getaway for nature buffs and foodies wrapped up in one journey. The tour stops at about four restaurants, each boasting a historic or cultural backdrop. After dining, there lies an opportunity to walk off the food with the Akampong Maroon Drummers. Our aim is to preserve the integrity and uniqueness of the region the beauty, diversity, and sheer magnificence of the region is unparalleled. The Ministry of Tourism has identified gastronomy tourism as a medium for diversifying destination Jamaica. Through the Tourism Linkages Network, the Gastronomy Network is offering locals and visitors a tasty treat of the Jamaica Blue Mountains. To plan your own food trail inside the mountains, contact the Gastronomy Network. They're located at the Jamaica Tourism Center, 64 Nutsford Boulevard, New Kingston, or call them at 920-4926-30. Nutritious food, succulent dishes, superior workmanship, and excellent service. Jamaica is on the go. Let's grow what we eat and eat what we grow. Let's harness the indomitable spirit of our most valued resource, our people. Let's support our local businesses. After all, buying Jamaica means building Jamaica. The hurricane season officially ends November. And just this week, Met Service issued a flash flood watch for all parishes. Given the varying rainfall conditions in the country over the past 48 hours, Jamaicans are being reminded that we're not exempt from being hit by a hurricane or storm. Each citizen must be prepared. A hurricane kit must be created and easily accessible at home and at the workplace. This kit, as you already know, should include necessary supplies such as canned food, water, candles, batteries, and first aid elements. At the workplace, all staff should be on alert and stand by to respond to any adverse events. Jamaicans should also report incidents of flooding or landslides to municipal corporations and emergency response entities. Remember, a responsive citizen assists to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. This is where the magazine closes for today. But if you need more information on the features aired in today's show, click on our webpage, jis.gov.jm. There you may also find more info on government programs and policies. For more television features, visit our YouTube channel. We're also on various social media sites. You may also download our app from the Google and Apple stores to stay informed while you're on the go. I'm Theodore Henry. Do have a wonderful evening. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.